Greetings and peace to you. I hope you're well and in good health, of a sober mind, and in spiritual equilibrium. Today we begin Conversation with Christ, Chapter 1, The Purpose of Meditation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. A good deal of the confusion surrounding meditation results from a failure to recognize its basic, fundamental purpose. Simply stated, the aim of meditation is to provide a framework or setting for a personal, heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Christ. If this primary goal is retained in mind Throughout our entire discussion of meditation, much of the mystery will fade away. St. Teresa sums up the whole matter with one magnificent sweep of the pen in her classical definition of mental prayer. Mental prayer is nothing else than an intimate friendship, a frequent heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him by whom we know ourselves to be loved. Therefore, all that precedes meditation, all that accompanies it, and all that follows it, has for its primary aim the stimulation of this conversation with Christ. Let us repeat it again for it is of extreme importance. Meditation, in its final analysis, should be, basically, a friendly conversation with Christ. The practice of meditation has assumed frightening proportions in the minds of many. It is regarded warily as some type of mental workout, which leaves one better prepared to serve God, a spiritual setting-up exercise. The assumption, therefore, is that meditation is intended only for intellectuals and is definitely not something to be undertaken rashly by those further down the intellectual ladder. Nothing could be further from the truth. Meditation is for all university professors and grade school graduates alike. First of all, the word meditation. The term is confusing, for in this conversation with Christ, meditation is only one part of the process. By entitling the entire procedure meditation, we are in effect calling the whole by one of its parts. St. Teresa preferred to designate the process mental prayer, and in her writings one finds the terms mental prayer and prayer predominantly employed in place of meditation. 
But to preclude further difficulty, we will continue to designate the entire process by the more widely accepted term meditation, with the tacit reservation that meditation is but one of the divisions of mental prayer. In following this pattern, we will here employ the word consideration for that part of prayer which is specifically the meditation. Meditation, then, is interior prayer without the aid of rosaries, prayer books, or missals. It is the prayer in which we talk to God in our own words. It is distinguished from vocal prayer, which employs the words and sentiments of some saint, spiritual writer, or the liturgy itself. St. Teresa rather chides at the sharp distinction made between mental and vocal prayer. The erroneous assumption in many quarters is that conversation with God is the aim of mental prayer, but not of vocal prayer. St. Teresa is vigorous in her assertion that we must talk to God in both mental and vocal prayer. Vocal prayer, she staunchly maintains, in which interior contact with God is absent, is no prayer at all. During vocal prayer, we rely on the formulae of some other person. In mental prayer, we attempt to stimulate a direct conversation with Christ using our own words and thoughts. While it is important to remember what meditation is, it is equally important to remember what it is not. It is definitely not spiritual reading, nor examination of conscience, nor the formation of rules for better conduct. Modern methods have lent to the general confusion by attempting to cram spiritual reading, examination of conscience, and amendment of life into the period of meditation. These practices have a definite position of importance in the spiritual life, but that position is not the period of meditation. Spiritual reading is quite necessary in our times to center our hearts on the true purpose of life in face of the unrelenting media which constantly channel a materialistic philosophy of living into our lives and homes. But this is an exercise distinct from prayer. It is also imperative that we examine our consciences daily if progress in virtue is to be made. Concomitant with this should be the formation of definite resolutions for the future. But again, these are not the primary functions of meditation. Meditation is conversation with Christ, and our talk with him will often conclude with a promise to be more faithful in the future. This, however, is something that flows from our conversation. It is not a necessary part of it, for it may or may not be present on different occasions. In employing the term conversation, St. Teresa, of course, does not intend to infer that it is requisite to formulate explicit words interiorly, although this is advisable 
for those beginning the practice of meditation. The habit of meditation should bring us into loving contact with Christ, and our affection for him may be expressed with or without words. At times, it will be entirely proper to remain in Christ's presence, as did the, as did the apostles on Mount Tabor. Lord, it is good for us to be here. Our affection for Christ may be manifested in a loving gaze upon him, or in any number of wordless expressions of our love for him. All of these forms of contact are included in the phrase, conversation with Christ. Nor is meditation limited to contact with Christ alone. We may hold conversation with God, our loving Father, or with the Blessed Mother, or any of the saints. But to simplify our discussion, we shall continue to speak throughout of conversation with Christ. But at the outset, let us remember the fundamental aim of meditation as proposed by St. Teresa, the attainment of a friendly, intimate conversation with Christ. If this be retained in mind throughout, a giant step will have been taken along the road to successful meditation. God bless you. God love you. God's peace to you. Please pray for me as I pray for you.